Well, we've all seen it, even if we didn't know what it meant. Of course, now we do, loud and clear. It's been plastered and painted and proclaimed on walls, billboard, bumper stickers, and a variety of interesting tattoos. John 3:16. It could easily be the modern proclamation of our faith. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. As we move through the Easter season, this is a message we must absorb deeply into our hearts and minds. And then, and this is the most important thing, go out into the whole world and spread the good news. Okay, I admit we probably aren't going to go out into the whole world to do that, but something is expected of each and every one of us. When we renewed our baptismal commitment on Easter Sunday and were sprinkled with holy water, we're reminded that each one of us is called to responsibility, witness, and service. This commitment is confirmed repeatedly as we listen to the Acts of the Apostles during Easter time, including our reading today. Imagine what it was like for Peter and the disciples to get arrested for the name of Jesus. How privileged they must have felt. They are confident in the risen Christ. We sense that there's no doubt in their mind that proclaiming the death and resurrection of Christ could mean their own death, and of course, resurrection, and they are ready for it. Their confidence is boosted, of course, as they are led out of jail to continue worshiping in the public square. They made an impact, we know, because Luke reports that, quote, the captain and court officers went and brought them in, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. This message they were giving was touching the hearts and souls of those a people. The gospel also shares some important practicalities and assurances for us. First, the world is not condemned, but saved. All it takes is faith. Second, Christ is our light, ritualized in the Easter candle, brought into the dark church at the Easter vigil, proclaiming aloud, Christ our light, and our responding with joy, thanks be to God. And third, we have a choice. Choose the light or choose the dark. This is an invitation to a personal reflection and an intimate evaluation of our relationship with Christ. Are there dark areas of our life? What habits, issues, relationships, and concerns leave us in the dark? What do we have to do to move into the light? Maybe to risk to love, to forgive, or to ask for forgiveness, to have mercy, to do whatever is necessary to open ourselves up to the light. What works must we do that must be done in God? The gift of Easter each year is to help us renew our faith in action, uh, countering the bad habits that may have got us stuck in routines since last Easter. The incentive is very clear. It's on billboards, it's on bumper stickets, it's on graffiti, it's on interesting tattoos. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. Alleluia.